Howdy kiddos, let's talk about electronegativity and ionization energy this time. A couple more trends for the periodic table. Uh, so first we have to kind of define what these are. So follow me here. Let's talk about electronegativity first. EN is what we're going to call it. Now how electronegative something is, is going to be uh, how much does it want its neighbor's electrons. Right. So how badly an atom wants someone else's electrons. I'm just trying to personify it, make it a little bit easier. So how greedy is this element? So something that is really electronegative really, really wants electrons badly. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's actually talk about, uh, let's, uh, where do we want to go next? I want to give you the, both the definitions first. Okay. Ionization energy. Ionization energy is how much energy is required, so energy needed to rip off a valence electron. So the more energy it takes, the harder it is to rip off the valence electrons. Right, here. So let's, let's pretend this pin is a valence electron. Here. How much energy did that take? Barely any. Barely any. So what if I put it out here and I bet you take out, go ahead, go ahead, take it out. Oh, <laughs> it took a little bit more energy and she didn't even get the whole thing. Okay, so, uh, so it took you less, it took less ionization energy for you to pull the first one out. Right. It took more energy to pull the second one out. So let's talk about these trends, how they look on the periodic table. Okay. All right. This should be pretty easy. They actually both have the exact same trend. So both electronegativity and ionization energy, as you move across, they will increase. Okay, so that means the stuff over here, like fluorine and oxygen, mm -hmm. really electronegative. They really want electrons. Mm -hmm. And also, they have really high ionization energies, meaning you're going to have to apply a lot of energy in order to get their electrons off of them. And that makes sense because they have six or seven valence electrons. Yeah. So they want to take other electrons rather than give up their own. Exactly. So something like these guys over here, lithium and beryllium, their ionization energy is really low. They're like, just take my electrons, dude. I don't, I don't want them. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, so then what is the trend as we move down for electronegativity and ionization energy? As we move down... The electronegativity and ionization energy is going to decrease. Decrease. Okay. Now, why is that? Well, there's a couple reasons. Um, usually, there's a little bit of those that that shielding effect that we talk about with the energy levels. As you have more and more energy levels out there, um, let's say if I if I hold my valence electron out here, it's really easy for uh, someone to grab. If it's closer right. to my nucleus, then it's going to be harder for someone to grab. So Ionization energy, it makes sense that it decreases. Electronegativity, the nucleus can no longer hold on to those electrons, and they don't really want anybody else's electrons anyway. No. Um, but yeah, they have the same trend. So increase across and decrease down. That's electronegativity and ionization energy. Ta-da! So what that means is the bottom left of your periodic table ah, is yes. very reactive. Because okay. it doesn't take very much ionization energy to remove those electrons. Yeah, so these guys are reactive because they will very readily give up their electrons. And then this area right here yes. is very reactive also, but for a different reason. It's because reactive. they want electrons. Yeah, so they, these guys want electrons. These guys don't want electrons. Thank you for that. I thought I was done, but I, I couldn't. No, listen. Okay. 